Hello, it's time for a new screencast lecture. Today's topic is going to be ecology, competition, and limiting factors. Let's first think about cute fuzzy bunnies. Here's a picture of Bunny Island in Japan. Well, bunnies are well known for rapid breeding and population growth. So the population growth of bunnies can be fairly quick over a short period of time. Many bunnies. Ah, overrun. It's a lot of bun buns. Those are bunnies, yes. So since the bunnies will reproduce very quickly, will the total number of bunnies continue to grow forever and ever to infinity number of bunnies? Well, eventually the ecosystem will not be able to support any more bunnies. So some of them, unfortunately... going to make it. Sometimes there just isn't enough resources for all of the members of the species in the area. And speaking of resources, what are some of those resources that living things need? In other words, what are some of the requirements for life? This is a quick review. Energy, water, air, shelter, living space, appropriate temperature. And the thing is about all these resources, resources are finite. That's the opposite of infinite. Infinite means not finite. So finite means that there is not an endless supply of these resources for everyone. And that brings us to the idea of competition. Since there is not enough resources for everyone, there is going to be competition for those resources. And competition is going to occur when two or more organisms seek out the same resources at the same time. Now let's think about competition with people. What are some ways that people will compete with one another. Games, many different types of games, chess, Pokemon, video games, you name it, people will compete about it. Sports, of course, lots of people like to compete in sports. I what, did soccer. What, what, what sport do you like? I did soccer. What's your favorite sport, soccer? Baseball. Yeah, I thought so. Grades, sometimes will be competition for grades, sometimes you'll have people uh, brag about their high grades or make fun of other people, unfortunately, if they didn't get high grades. Classroom, there'll be competition. You want to finish like, ranked at the highest. So like when you're in high school, you'll have your class ranking. Some people want to be number one. And if, especially if you have siblings, you may have competition for attention from your parents or attention from friends. Like, you'll fight over friends, unfortunately. That happens a lot. When you get old enough to look for a job, often there will be more than one person who is interviewing or trying to get that same job that you want. So there will be a competition for who will get that job. And, of course, sometimes there will be competitions for dreamy boys, like for One Direction or whoever you kids are into these days. You're turning heads when you walk through the door. Don't need makeup. Competition. If you take a look at this nature scene, what could be some examples of competition that you see here? Here you see the lion will try to eat the zebra or even the rabbit, and the eagle can also eat the rabbit. So the lion and the eagle will be directly in competition for consuming the rabbit. That could be one example. Um, other examples of competitions among organisms, they could compete for territory. They could compete for mates, water, uh, shelters, like best shelters, safest shelters. Who gets the food? Let's take a look at a video, speaking of comp uh, competing for mates. Let's take a look. There are over 50 species of this showy little bird, and they all go full out to court the ladies. At breeding time, the brightly colored males stake out a staging area called a lek, a branch serves as the dance floor. The noise also warns other males. Back off, she's mine. 
The competition is so fierce that only alpha males will mate. One of the ideas about competition is that competition for these resources will slow population growth. So like we talked about, the bunnies are not going to continue to uh, increase in numbers forever and ever. Eventually, there's going to become a point where there's just not enough resources to support that many bunnies. That would be limiting factors. And what could be some of these limiting factors? What are some factors that will keep the bunny population from growing to an infinite number? Those are called limiting factors. And the definition of limiting factors is anything that restricts the number of individuals in a population. And there could be a number of different examples of that. Some of those examples of limiting factors would be considered to be non-living. And examples of non-living limiting factors could be lack of living space, lack of water, lack of appropriate shelter, inappropriate climate. Like here you see loss of habitat. The people are cutting down trees or cutting down the forest in order to use the wood to build homes, and in addition to cutting down the trees for the building materials, they may also now turn this area into a farm, which is not going to be appropriate habitat for many different animals that used to live in the forest. Drought would be a severe lack of rainfall that would definitely limit the number of a species that could live in an area. There could be environmental changes that happen over time where the climate gets too warm or the climate gets too cold. Different, uh, Maybe the, the area will become wetter or too dry for that species. So many different environmental changes may occur over time. It's usually not something that happens overnight. Uh, competition for space. Now, if you take a look at our birds here, there's lots of birds in a relatively small space. Now, the perches that they are sitting on are all perches equally desirable for these birds. We take a look at the bird in the red circle, the bird in the yellow circle. Do both of these have an equally desirable perch? The answer is no. The yellow perch would generally be more preferable because this bird is going to be less vulnerable vulnerable to predators. This bird all out here all by itself, and another bird could easily swoop in and grab this bird versus this one. The bird is going to be surrounded by other birds. It'll confuse the predator. It'll be much safer here surrounded by other birds. Limiting factors could also be living. Examples uh, in this category could be predators, a lack of food, like if they're, the plant life uh, would die off and there's not enough plant life for it anymore. Diseases that came in, germs. Like a predator like this bear will limit the size of the salmon population. Inadequate food supply will limit the amount of cattle that this area could support. This area has been overgrazed. What that means is that the ground, the grass has been eaten too much. And once the ground cover gets eaten away, then the soil can be damaged, the soil can erode away, and new grass may not grow back. It's been overgrazed. Diseases can come in and wipe out members of the species and limit the number. It could be a new disease. It could be a disease that's been around for a long time. Plants. Plants are living things, and living things do compete. How do plants compete? <laughs> Every, little, every living thing is made of cells, and plants are made of cells, and they compete for sunlight, they compete for nutrients, they compete for space. Like, for example, these honeysuckle plants, they re maintain their leaves for a long time, much longer into the fall than most other trees and plants, and so they'll cut out the light to plants that are smaller, the smaller trees, baby trees, and they will not get enough sunlight and they may not be able to grow. So you can see the undergrowth here doesn't have much plant life and much greenery at all. The honeysuckle has blocked out the sunlight and has stopped them from growing. Intense competition is among individuals of the same species, like these two swans are going to compete with one another. Why do you think that that's true? Why do you think that the most intense competition is often among individuals of the same species? 
That is because they need the exact same type of resources. So a bunny is going to need the same type of food as another bunny of its species. It's going to need roughly the same amount of water. It's going to be competing for the same mates. Uh, the same type of burrow is best for that, that particular species. They're going to be competing directly with one another. Let's finish up with the idea of carrying capacity. Carrying capacity is the number of individuals of a species that is capable of surviving in a particular area. It is dependent upon the effects of limiting factors. Carrying capacity will change as, for example, as a population number increases, the available resources like the nesting space is going to decrease. So if you have 10 rabbits versus 30 rabbits, there's going to be much less available resources to the species that had the uh, population that has 30 rabbits in it that versus a population that only has 10 rabbits in it. And the carrying capacity is going to be defined as the largest number of individuals of one species that an ecosystem can support over time. Here's a principle of biology. An ecosystem can only support a limited number of species before problems begin happening. So how do scientists determine that number and what things can affect it? But sometimes a healthy ecosystem gets damaged when too many of a certain species eat all the food. Just imagine a swarm of locusts eating all the vegetation in sight. Once an ecosystem gets that damaged, it can impact the health of everything that lives there. So what's the right balance? Biologists call the right balance the biological carrying capacity. It's the capacity of an ecosystem to carry or support a healthy number of a certain species. For instance, if a forest type supports two healthy bears per square mile, what happens if four bears try to live there? They may eat all the available food and not find enough to remain healthy. Plus, if they eat all the fruit and nuts, they might damage the next generation of fruit and nut plants in the ecosystem. So how can biologists manage Lake Winnebago for the optimum biological carrying capacity for sturgeon? Like most species of fish and wildlife, Biologists help manage an ecosystem by regulating the number of species harvested. If there are too many sturgeon, they can issue more sturgeon licenses to reduce the population. If too many walleye could damage the shad food source, they can increase the catch numbers for walleye. So controlling species populations helps maintain a healthy ecosystem. Why is carrying capacity important? Well. Think about if a species exceeds the carrying capacity of its environment, what is going to happen? If the population exceeds the carrying capacity of the environment, the ecosystem is not going to be able to support all of the members of the species anymore. So some of those individuals are going to end up dying or they're going to need to move, migrate to another area. There's just not enough resources available for the numbers, the members of the species in that area. All right, that was short and sweet, so hopefully you learned something. We'll see you next time. See ya. Be careful, kids. Bye. Nice look. <laughs>